In this video, we're going to look at graphing linear equations and linear functions. Two key words here, linear equations and linear functions, all right? Both of them have the word linear, meaning it's related to a line. And then an equation or a linear equation, you can kind of think of that as any equation that can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, okay? You can think of that as being a linear equation. Linear function, remember a function is a relation such that our set of ordered pairs such that every input, and we usually call our inputs our x values, correspond to exactly one output, all right? And of course, we say that we can write our uh, linear functions in that form as well. All right, so a quick review of equations and functions. Of course, we have two variables here. And when we have two variables, um, that opens us up to, um, you know, two dimensions. And so what we normally do is we graph in our x, y plane so that we can um, show all of our solutions <clears throat> to equations and two variables. All right. Well, one method of showing our solutions is to graph, and one method of graphing is actually um, to find in your X, to find your x and y intercepts. And so I have um, some steps on how you can find your x and y intercepts. Um, just as a review, an x intercept is the place where your graph crosses your x axis. All right. And to find those, we have to set y equal to zero in our algebraic equation and then solve for x and the reason why we set y equal to zero is because if you look at all points that are on your x-axis they're all going to have a y coordinate of zero so that's exactly why we set y equal to zero and then solve for x on the other end of things finding your y-intercept right remember your y-intercept is your places where your graph crosses the y-axis okay so I'm drawing some points on the y-axis because your y-intercepts are going to be on the y-axis. And in this case, we set x equal to 0 and solve for y. And if you think about points on your y-axis, they all have an x-coordinate of 0. So that gives us why we want to go through these methods here. Let's look at an example, and then we'll look at how we can use um, our x and y-intercepts to graph lines. Let's look at this example here. It says find the x and y intercepts of the equation 2x plus 3y equals, equals 1. Sorry. All right, I'm going to start first start with finding my x-intercept. Okay. Well, I'm going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. So I get 3 times 0, which is 0. So I get the equation 2x equals 1. I can divide both sides by 2. I get x equals one half. Okay, and since x equals one half, my x coordinate of my ordered pair, if I wanted to write it as an ordered pair, would be one half. The y coordinate would be zero since I put zero in for y. So my x intercept is the point one half zero. Let's find our y intercept. I'm going to set x equal to zero, so I get two times zero plus three y equals 1. All right, 2 times 0 is 0, so I get 3y equals 1. I can divide by both sides by 3, and I have that y equals 1 third. And so if I want to write that as an ordered pair, right, since it is a point, I let x be 0 here, so my x coordinate is going to be 0, and my y coordinate is going to be 1 third. So that, these are my x and my y intercepts. And now what we want to do is be able to use our x and y intercept to help us graph. So we'll talk about that next. All right, graphing linear equations and functions using the x and y intercepts. All right, it says first thing you need to do is to find the intercepts, right? If we're going to use them, we need to find them first. So we can go through that process that we just did in that example, that previous example. Then we're going to plot the intercepts on our plane, our x, y plane, and then we're going to draw the line that connects those two um, points. Okay, and so we have this example here. We're going to do just one example, actually. I don't know why I call it A, but I have X minus 2Y equals 6. Okay, so first I'm going to look at finding my X-intercept. Okay, well, instead of writing Y, I'm going to replace Y with 0. 
All right, two times zero is zero, so I get x equals six. So this one worked out pretty nicely. And as an ordered pair, it'd be the point zero. Oh, that's an error. It'd be the point six zero. All right, my x coordinate is six, my y coordinate is zero, so I get the point six zero. To find our y intercept, we let x be zero. So I'll get zero minus two y equals six. Okay, well, zero is just zero. All right, so I'm just left with negative two y equals six. I can divide both sides by negative two and I'll get that y equals negative three. And as an ordered pair, that'll give me the point zero, negative three. My x, which is here, is zero, and my y is negative three. So I'm gonna plot these two points in the same coordinate plane. I have the point six, zero, right? So for my origin, I will go to the right six units and plot my point. And I can label that point. And I have the point zero, negative three. So for my origin, I just go down three units. That'd be the point zero, negative three. And then I just connect those two points with as straight of a line that I can get. And there we have that equation of the line. And remember, when we graph something or graph an equation or graph something, we're showing all the all the solutions to that certain equation, right? So since we can't write all the solutions, our only way to show all our solution is to graph. So all of the ordered pairs that satisfy this equation here are given on this graph, okay? And so that's why we graph so that we can see all of our solutions. So that's graphing using the x and y intercept. The most popular method of graphing equations of lines is to use the slope and the y intercept, okay? And so what most people remember when they're dealing with equations of line is the formula y equals mx plus b, all right? m is your slope and b is your y intercept. And so when we graph these equations here, <clears throat> what, what will be nice is to solve for y, get it into y equals mx plus b form, and then determine what the slope is, which is always multiplied by x, and what your y-intercept is, which is the number that's outside, um, that's just your constant term. All right, so that's the first step. Right in y equals mx plus b form and determine the slope and the y-intercept. After we do that, we're going to plot the y-intercept because that's going to be a point on my graph. And then from that y-intercept, we're going to use our slope, which is our rise over run, in order to help us find another point that our line goes through. And then we're going to draw the line. Let's look at this example here. I have 2x plus 3y equals 9. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get it into y equals mx plus b form, all right? So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides first. When I subtract 2x from both sides, they cancel. I get 3y equals. Now, because I want it into mx plus b form, I'm going to actually, I'm going to write this as a negative 2x plus 9, all right? You don't have to do that. You can write 9 minus 2x if you like, all right? I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I'm going to get y equals negative two-thirds x plus 9 over 3, which is just 3. And so when I look, I immediately see that my slope is negative two-thirds, and my y-intercept occurs at y equals negative 3. Okay, so I get m equals negative two-thirds, and my b is 9. All right, that's my y-intercept. All right, now you notice that your slope is rise over run, all right? All right, this negative is on the outside here. You can attach the negative to the two, or you can attach it, attach it to that three there. It doesn't matter. Positive two divided by negative three is still negative two-thirds. Negative two divided by positive three is still negative two-thirds, so it really doesn't matter. Um, but we're always gonna do our rise over our run. Rise is up and down, run is left to right. 
So I'm going to start with my y-intercept, which is at 9 or the point 0, 0,9. So I'm going to come to my graph and I'm going to graph it. And to find another point, well, I'm going to first attach, I'm going to attach this negative to that 2. All right. So instead of going up two units, I'm going to go down two units. And then since that three will be positive, I'll go to the right three units. One, two, three. And so, of course, I have my y-intercept, which is zero, nine. But another point that my graph goes through is the point three, seven. Okay, and you can actually continuously do your slope to get a more accurate line. For instance, from this point three seven, I can go down two units and to the right three units, and I have another point. Okay, and so I'm going to draw my line, and there we have it. That is this consists or this makes up all the solutions to this equation right here. Right, that's a, that again is why we want to graph. Let's look at another example. We have x equals five. Okay. Now, what we said before was that when we graph, we're going to get into y equals mx plus b, plus b form. Well, there is no y. Okay, and so when this happens. We have a special case, right? So we have a special case here. Anytime we have a special case, we're either going to have a horizontal line or a vertical line, all right? In this case, when we have x equal a number, it's always going to be a vertical line. I know that I, if I were to plot any point whatsoever, it would be the point x equals 5. That would be my only x value. And so since that's my only x value, I have no other choice but to use a vertical line because that's my only x value that this line goes through. Okay? The slope of any vertical line is undefined. And so we won't have a defined slope. That means we have a vertical line. One more example involving lines, and then we're going to get to something a little different. In this example here, we have f of x equals negative 3. With that, if you notice, I have f of x equals negative 3 instead of y equals negative 3. So it's given to me in function notation. But it's going to be the same graph as the line y equals negative 3. All right. Again, I don't have an x, so this is a special case. All right, this is a special case because I don't have an x coordinate or x variable in my equation. And it's either going to be horizontal or vertical. Well, this time, you know, I have y equals some number. That means my only y value is going to be the y value that goes through that specific number, and that's the y value 0, negative 3 at negative 3. Okay, so this is the only y value. It's telling me restrict your y's to only include a y value of negative 3. Well, if my that's my only y value, then I have to have a horizontal line. Sorry, it's a little crooked there. And so this is always a horizontal line. The slope of any horizontal line is always 0. Okay, it's always 0. Last thing I want to talk about in this section is what we call domain and range. We're actually going to use this a little bit later, but I do want to review domain and range since we started talking about our review and are using the word functions. All right. Domain, when I say domain, I'm talking about the set of all input values. All right. We usually use X for which a function is defined all right so i want to know all the x values where my function is defined i don't care about the ones where they're not i'm talking about specifically the ones where my function is defined and then the range is sort of the opposite it's the set of all output values 
guess I should put an S up here. And our outputs are normally Y, for which the, a function is defined. So what we want to do is be able to use this definition to help us find the domain and range, or these definitions to, to, you know, to classify or characterize some of our functions that we're going to be looking at. All right, and this is all for our video today.